Hey guys, welcome back to another great game of CDH. But before I get to the video, I do want to thank everyone who entered the giveaway, and I want to announce the winners. Congrats to our four lucky winners. I've already contacted them, and hopefully they'll enjoy the decks. But I also want to thank Dylan and Cam from play to win for playing in today's game. It was a blast and hopefully we can get some more games in soon. Also, if you're interested in playing with us, hop on our Discord. We have an ever-growing community and we'll love to talk MTG or whatever strikes our fantasy. And another benefit is we often let people know when we play and would love to meet some new people. Alright, block there, kill that, oh, that is trample. Guess I'm just dead on board. First up, we have Dylan playing his Green Grixis Ikra Shadiki Chrome List. This is an ad nos strategy that uses crop rotation for Beseju to cast an uncounterable ad nos and then win with either Thassos Tainted Pact or Underworld Breach LED Brainstorm. It's a cool deck, and if it looks interesting to you, I will have the deck linked in the description down below. Next up, we have Jimmy and his Sithis Harvest Hand deck. This is Selesnya Enchantress. It's an enchantment matter strategy that utilizes Sithis's innate card draw to outvalue his opponents. It generates a lot of mana and can really churn through the deck once it gets going. In the third spot, we have Cam piloting Ishra Jessica. This is a quick combo deck with the goal of assembling an infinite mana combo or doing normal Jessica breach shenanigans with intuition. It's got a lot of power and when everything else fails, Isha can one-shot players very easily with or without the aid of Jessica. And bringing up the rear, we have Fernando playing his favorite, Brago, King Eternal. This Azorius artifact stack deck utilizes lots of fast mana and stacks pieces to slow down his opponents, while relying on Brago to reset his fast mana and gain advantage. But if the deck looks interesting, check out our video deck tech, as we got Brago himself to explain the power he wields. Although he's not the fastest speaker, so I suggest playing it at a faster speed. But without further ado, let's get on to the gameplay. Dylan starts off the game with a Mana Confluence, and then casts a Lotus Petal. He keeps the ramp coming with a Mana Vault. Jimmy has a Mox Diamond and discards a Plains. He then plays another as Land and powers out a first turn Sithis. Cam follows everyone's strong first turn with an Ancient Tomb of Itself and then a Chrome Mox. He imprints a Chain of Vapor and casts a Rhystic Study. Jesus. Oh. Your plays are so good compared to mine. Alright, pass the Uh-huh. Fernando unfortunately needs to keep up with the table as he plays a Sea of Clouds and then casts a Mana Vault of his own, unfortunately giving a card to Cam. Dylan plays a Tarnished Citadel and takes 4 damage to cast Krom. He chooses to save his Lotus Petal and gives another card to Cam, but heads the combat and swings the Hasty Krom at Cam for 4. Jimmy has a Command Tower and then casts a Sylvan Library. He draws off Sithis and does pay the extra for the Rhystic. He finishes his turn hitting Dylan with Sithis. Cam also has a command tower and then casts a Soul Ring, which then powers out an Ishai with Dylan getting a draw off Krom. Fernando plays a snow covered island and then casts his commander Brago. He does have the extra for the Rhystic, but Ishai does get a counter. Dylan plays a polluted delta as land and sends Krom at Jimmy despite his best efforts at persuasion. I gain life though. That's true. And even more reason to take some of it away. Jimmy triggers his library, but responding to the trigger, Dylan cracks his fetch for an underground sea and cracks his pedal to cast the Notion Thief. Cam gets both a draw and another counter on Ishai. And while the thief resolves, Jimmy does try to get rid of the pesky rogue with a path to exile. Ishai gets another counter while Jimmy pays for the Rhystic. But things go amiss as Dylan then casts a deflecting swat to swerve the path to Ishai. I feel left out. I hate everything that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Ishai nice. gets hit, and I go get a basic. Cam gets an island, and Jimmy doesn't end up using his Sylvan. Unfortunately for Jimmy, his commander is a must draw, so instead of casting enchantments, he simply heads the combat and swings Sithis at Dylan. Cam plays a scalding turn and then casts his commander Jessica. She doesn't stick around for long as Cam minus 2 her to deal 2 damage to the Notion Thief, Sithis, and lastly Dylan himself. Jimmy does have a response as he casts a Blacksmith skill to save his commander. 
Cam then cracks his fetch to grab a Tundra, which he uses for an Esper Sentinel. Fernando has a snow-covered plains and casts the Chrome Mox. He doesn't pay for the Rhystic, but does pay for the Sentinel, and imprints a Swan Song. Still having cards to cast pre-combat, he plays a Teferi Time Raveler, with Dylan drawing off Chrome and Cam off Rhystic. The Teferi doesn't stick around though as Cam counters it with a Force of Negation, exiling a Winds of Rebuke. Fernando then heads the combat and swings Brago at Jimmy, and then blinks out his permanence but is done after that. Dylan starts off with violence as Krom heads at Jimmy, and on his second main phase he casts a Sylvan of his own. And man, is that double tax really working as Dylan is only able to pay for one and Cam gets a draw. Jimmy activates his library and pays 4 to keep an extra card. He starts off with a carpet of flowers and lets Cam draw for 2, while he gets a draw off Sithis. He passes to his second main and activates the carpet for mana to cast Heliod, Suncrown. Dylan gets a draw off Grom and Cam off Rhystic, while he gets a draw off Sithis. Jimmy does forget he's already in his second main as he hits Cam with Sithis. Cam has a Bloodstained Mire and decides he needs some info as he pays 2 life for a Gitaxian Probe to look at Dylan's hand and draw. He then casts the Mana Vault with Dylan drawing off Krom, and Cam follows it up with Ishai. He drops a Fell War Stone to get back to 7 cards in hand and finishes his turn attacking Dylan with the Esper Sentinel. Fine. And now that. <laughs> Rude! Fernando has another Snow Covered Plains and casts the Sensei's Divining Top. Ishai gets a counter, and Fernando pays for both Rhystic and the Sentinel. He then casts Athalia, Heretic Cathar, with Dylan drawing off Chrome, and Ishai getting a counter, and Fernando paying for the Rhystic. Still with Athalia on the stack, Cam cracks his fetch for an untapped Volcanic, but doesn't have any other responses. Fernando then heads the combat and hits Jimmy again with Brago, and finishes his turn blinking out the King and his Mana Vault. Dylan starts off with his Sylvan, but doesn't keep any extra. What happens if I pay one life here, and I cast a gamble? A bunch of triggers happens. <laughs> so many triggers happen. <laughs> I want to just do one thing and see what happens. Ishai, ask for Sentinel, you paying? What about Rhystic Study? <laughs> Dylan finds a card and randomly discards a Taiga. He passes and discards a Cabal Ritual due to hand size. Jimmy also Sylvans and likes what he sees as he keeps an extra card. He plays an Exotic Orchard and then casts a new card from AFR, Paladin Class. Ishai gets a counter while Jimmy pays for the Rhystic but not the Sentinel, with Jimmy drawing off Sithis and gaining a life, which triggers Heliod to give Sithis a counter. Jimmy goes to his second main and activates the carpet for 3 green, which he uses for an Enchantress's Presence. Ishai gets another counter while the Rhystic is paid for and Dylan draws off Krom, with Jimmy drawing and gaining a life off Sithis, which again triggers Heliod to put another counter on Sithis. Jimmy is nothing else and Cam at his end step brainstorms, but after he's done putting two cards back, Jimmy casts a Noxious Revival to put a Bloodstained Mire back on top of Cam's library. Cam starts off his turn with a gamble. He finds a card to hand and randomly discards a Wooded Foothills, <gasps> what did Foothills? It's probably not it. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> got him. You always say you got him, no matter what. Cam then transmutes a Muddle the Mixture for an Isochron Scepter, which he then casts. Dylan gets a draw off Krom and Fernando tops, but they both don't find anything as the Scepter resolves and imprints a Dramatic Reversal. Cam activates the Scepter and Dylan attempts to counter the Dramatic Reversal with a Swan Song. I don't know if there's any amount of interaction that you guys could have that would help. <laughs> this spell, and if you would like yeah. to see others, I also have swap. Well, let's wait. Let's wait. See what everyone else has got here. I, uh, yeah, nothing, yeah. The spell nothing. resolves on the swan song. Anyone got anything? Unfortunately, no. I have a source of blousures. Okay, so I got it. I have a paladin class. Unfortunately, that is the game as the rest of the table scoop it up. Game review. And if I could sum up that game with one word, it would be value. Cam just drew too many cards, and even though Jimmy and Dylan did have their own engines, they just couldn't keep up. Both players unfortunately needed to keep casting spells to gain value, and that just fed Cam too much. Dylan had an amazing hand, but unfortunately didn't have the mana to deploy it, even though Chrome was providing a lot of card draw. 
And as for Fernando, having his Teferi countered was a really big blow, and he really wasn't able to recover from it. Now, question for the viewer. Do you think Ristic, Mystic Remora, and now the new Esper Sentinel are too strong in our format? It often seems like whoever can deploy these cards often just wins. But let me know in the comments down below. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I just wanted to let you know that we have a TCG affiliate link. And if you ever see a card you want to try or are inspired to brew something new, use our link when purchasing and we'll receive a small portion of the sale. This is a great way to support the channel. And if you enjoyed the gameplay, please leave a like and subscribe as it really helps us keep making videos. And remember, never give up, even if you're dead on board. I'll see you guys later.